wow, I finally got a new bike. Yep, it's a tried and true adventure doodad. And it was time to retire the old street riding jacket in for something a little more durable and built for the functionality that comes with riding over asphalt and dirt alike. So let's talk the adventure category jacket. What are the main criteria? Lightweight, probably not leather, breathable and modular. They should offer some sort of weather protection against the cold and the rain. Lots of pockets to store uh, the stuff you take with you and venting to allow for maximum airflow when needed, which is most of the time. Armor to protect you from the hard falls you're bound to experience as you ride through the desert in Moab in complete defiance of your age. When I started my search, the sheer number of offerings from the litany of manufacturers was daunting. Moreover, there aren't really that many reviews on most jackets. I'm talking reviews here, not sales promos. As rife with products the adventure jacket market has, could there really be enough room for all of these variations? Dainese, Bering, BMW, Rika, Ruka, First Gear, Scorpion, Alpine Stars, Liat, Moose Racing, Arc Racing, Oxford Montreal, Icon, Speedy, Sedici, RST, Toratec. <gasps> all of them have multiple offerings in this category. So I needed to filter this down a bit. As I explored some more, it became apparent that there were two manufacturers that were winning the popularity contest in the adventure jacket market, Revit Sport and Climb. Both companies either have really good marketing campaigns or there is actually something behind the hype. Could be a little of both. For me, being from the desert southwest, there was one most important factor to consider, and that's the heat. Our average daily temperature out in Las Vegas is 80 degrees annually, but we have three months of the year where the average temperature is over 100 degrees. It's hot at night here. If you've ever ridden in this heat, it's like a blow dryer on high, right in your face. Right in your face. Anything you can do to mitigate the effects, you do. Clearly, I'm whittling this list down to vented and mesh jacket offerings. So one more thing to consider is price. I'd venture to say that outside of the track racing suit category, adventure jackets reach some of the highest prices in the motorcycle apparel world. If you want an adventure jacket with all of the bells and whistles, offerings from Climb, Ruka, and Toratec, and Revit will cost you more than $1,000. Yikes. This whittled down my choices some more. Now the picture was becoming more clear. When I started diving into the offerings from Climb and Revit, it became pretty obvious that these two companies were paying close attention to each other, creating products to remain competitive in their segments with a certain design philosophy that would appeal stylistically to differing palettes of consumers. The big question I had was, what more was I getting by opting for each brand's higher-end mesh jackets over their entry-level ones? The only way to find out was to buy one of each. So I'm going to throw in another sub-qualifier here. It has to be below $1,000. I know there are people out there that are going to say safety is everything and you get what you pay for and quality isn't cheap, but for me personally, $600 is a lot of money for a jacket. I think it's a lot for most people. Am I so wrong to expect a certain level of quality at this price point? I am aware that Climb makes the Adventure Rally Air, but at the time of this review, it looks to be in the middle of a product refresh and this review includes current models at current MSRPs. So let's get it started. The Battle of the Mesh Jackets. The entry level contenders are the Climb Induction and the Revit Tornado. Right off the bat, Revit has that European flair, whereas Climb is clearly American made. One is tighter and slim fitting, the other leaves a little room to breathe. Let's go through the Climb Induction. Body construction. This is Climb's entry level mesh offering. This is really a no frills jacket, but it's clear that this thing is designed to breathe. The body is constructed out of Climb's proprietary carbonite mesh fabric. Sounds like something from a Superman movie, but Carbonite is actually Climb's polyester weave that they claim is 750% stronger than the fabrics used by other brands. It's akin to a fabric chainmail. Kind of looks like those anti-bite suits you see divers wearing when they swim with the sharks. When Climb released this jacket, they actually hung a BMW 1200 from it to show off its strength. Pretty badass. The abrasion zones on the shoulders, elbows, and forearms are 840D high tenacity nylon 6.6. .6. Basically, Cordora without calling it Cordora. Take a look on Wikipedia if you'd like to know more about 6.6 .6 nylon. Apparently, it's the strongest of the two commercially used nylons and fabrics. And 840D, it's nothing to laugh at either. That's some good abrasion resistance right there. In the elbow and shoulder and arm flex zones, there's a lighter carbonite stretch mesh. Carbonite stretch mesh. Pockets and storage. In the pockets category, you've got two hand warmer pockets, an outer zippered pocket on the left breastplate, and an inner zippered pocket over the right breastplate, and an emergency stat card pocket over the left wrist. Not a ton of space in this jacket, 
but enough room if you're out for a quick ride or you've got other places on your bike such as a tank bag to stash your stuff. For protection, the jacket includes D3O CE Level 1 armor at the shoulders, elbows, and on the back. The elbow armor is adjustable with integrated straps. There are Velcro adjustments at the wrist. Other features. There are YKK zippers throughout the jacket, a fleece-lined soft collar, and what Climb calls Biomotion Placed Reflective 3M Scotch Light Tape on the upper and lower arms and back. Apparently, Climb has done some extensive research on where to place reflective tape to help other drivers recognize the outline of a human at night. Like I said, this is a no-frills jacket, designed for maximum airflow. With this in mind, Climb did nail it. There are some low points, though. CE Level 1 armor is better than nothing at all, but not as good as Level 2 and just as heavy. And even though 840D fabric is impressive, there are better options out there for abrasion protection that wouldn't have raised the price of this jacket much. Let's dig into the Revit Tornado. So moving across the pond, this jacket is a toe-to-toe -to -toe contender with the induction. The Tornado is the entry-level mesh adventure jacket offering from Revit. Right away, there is the more tapered Euro cut. It doesn't matter what size I fit in an American brand, I always have to size up in a Revit. The main body is constructed of a polyester ripstop. This isn't a super special fabric, but it is designed with interwoven polyester tensile yarns designed to stop tears in the event of a spill. The mesh is Revit's proprietary open weave made with their own PWR yarn. PWR yarn is a 100% nylon thread with a unique internal bonding, which imparts excellent durability, high tensile and breaking strength, and ultimate abrasion resistance. The forearms and elbows utilize Revit's own take on Cordura, which is PWR750D. At the tops of the elbows, Revit has used PWR Wax 500D material. It's waxed for a slightly duller look. The jacket utilizes a 3D air mesh material for additional airflow around the neck area and over the triceps across the arms. This is pretty lightweight stuff that has been strategically placed in areas that are less susceptible to abrasion damage, purely for airflow. The Tornado comes with Revit's award-winning C-Flex CE Level 2 armor. The open construction allows the material to expand in on itself under impact, deflecting and reducing any impact energy out and away from the protector surface and away from the body. It turns impact energy into thermal energy. Anyhow, you get this in the shoulders and the elbows. The jacket is prepared to accept a divided chest protector and back protectors offered by Revit, but sadly, doesn't come with either of them. In the pockets category, there are two zippered hand warmer pockets. There's also a pair of pockets in the adjustable liner. Other features. You can adjust the elbows and waist with straps. The elbow armor is adjustable to three different heights inside of the jacket. There is an adjustable snap at the bicep to contour the jacket to the arm more if needed. The jacket features a fleece lined collar and a flexi snap adjuster collar, which allows the rider to adjust the flow of air on cold or hot days. For visibility, there are tiny dollops of reflectivity tape across the front and back of the jacket and some bigger strips across the Revit logos on the arms. But we wouldn't call this jacket highly visible at night. This jacket features a Hydrotex 2-in-1 thermal and waterproof liner. Revit claims this jacket can be worn standalone as a destination piece. I'm not sure it's something I would rock by itself. I guess it's a great option to have without paying extra for another piece of rainproof gear, but I'm starting to have my reservations about these modular options and jackets. More about that later. Moving up. Now, to answer the question I started asking myself once I dove down the adventure jacket rabbit hole, how much more of a jacket am I getting when I throw down another couple hundred bucks? I mean, the Climb Induction and the Revit Tornado 3 were $349 each. The next step up in the company's lines were $210 and $230 more. Would the increase in price really give me much more, or was the savings better spent on other gear? Let's start with the Climb Baja S4. Right away, you can tell the beefiness of this Climb offering over its entry-level counterpart. The body is constructed of shoulder high-tenacity nylon mesh. The best info I could find was on Climb's website, where Lucas from Climb says it's more durable than Carbonite in their promo video. This is our Scholar Dynatech mesh fabric. It's extremely durable. If you're familiar with the induction jacket, this is more durable than the induction mesh. There is Climb's Carbonite Stretch 1000D fabric in the jacket's stretch zones. In the abrasion zones, there is Super Fabric, abrasion-resistant fabric that is impregnated with tiny ceramic plates at the shoulder, elbow, and extending down the forearm. The pocket's cuffs and hems are all made of Cordura 750D. This jacket is built very tank-like, but hold this thing up to a light and you can see right through it. The jacket features the same D3O CE Level 1 armor in the shoulders, elbows, and back that the induction has. Again, it's good to get the back pad, but at this price point, I was kind of hoping to get CE Level 2 stuff. The armor is adjustable at the elbows via a pocket system, which is a nice touch. Let's talk about storage. This jacket does not disappoint. Six external pockets, 
two hand warmer pockets, two top-down cargo pockets, a stat card pocket, and one rear large storage rabbit pocket, a concealed document pocket behind the back pad, two lower internal stash pockets, an upper chest drop pocket, and a two liter Hydro Pack compatible pocket. Dope. Other features. 3M scotch light reflective materials in C790 carbon black to make it less noticeable by day, but put together utilizing Climb's biometric detection scheme. The neck has pullback strings to keep the jacket open on the hottest of days. The jacket comes with a pair of zippered openings for fitting the Climb kidney belt for extra stability. However, it's not included. That's plenty of adjustability on that jacket. Let's go over across the pond again and check out the competitor to the S4, the Revit Cayenne Pro. When you see Revit jackets in pictures, they all look a little homogenous, but in person, this thing is a looker. Again with the Euro cut. The main body is built with Revit's version of Cordura again, PWR750D, but the main material here is the same as the Baja S4, Scholar Dynatech. The abrasion zones are actual leather on this jacket, which is a nice touch. The arguments abound, but it's hard to beat leather for abrasion resistance. However, the leather on this jacket doesn't feel very heavy duty. The PWR750D is Teflon coated for dirt and water resistance, which is nice. Pockets. On par with Climb, this jacket is chocked with storage options. Extra large storage pockets on the front, and the pocket on the back is extremely large and can be used to store additional jackets and or layers. A secret pocket has been installed in the back side of the jacket's hem to store your valuables. The sleeve pocket features a small pocket to hold a card or paper. There's a document pocket, hand warmer pockets, inner pockets, slit pockets, stash pockets, plenty of pockets. Let's talk about the armor. CE level two armor in the back, shoulders, and arms. Now this is what I would like to have seen at this price point. Other features. Connectivity. Zip in the Revit cooling vest. Oh yeah, they don't make that anymore. There's connections for the high-vis vest and a connector for the adventure neck brace, which Revit no longer makes. But it does come with a detachable kidney belt, short and long connection zipper to connect to the pants, adjustable protector pockets in the elbows, drawback collar hook, and it's Hydra bag prepared. So let's wrap all this up. To answer the big question, is the step up in price worth the added features of the more expensive jackets? I understand the lower priced offerings. Maybe you just don't want to spend that much on a jacket. Like I don't want to buy some thousand dollar moose weight adventure jacket versus a $600 one that does just as good of a job. But if it's a question of adding some armor later on that you can't afford now, I would say save your money and wait until you can afford the step up in price. Much like buying aftermarket parts for your bike, sometimes getting it outfitted from the factory the way you want it makes more financial sense. You are getting more jacket for the money. Maybe that's not what you need, but that's your choice. Between the induction and the tornado, both of these jackets come in at 349 for a size large. If we are talking pure protection here, the induction has the upper hand. Between the two, it's the only one that comes with a back protector. Although Seasoft CE Level 2 armor is superior in the Tornado's shoulder and elbow protectors, the lack of inclusion means we still need to pick one up. So now you have to throw an extra $60 at the Tornado to somewhat level the playing field. They both use proprietary fabrics for the main mesh zones, but it's Climb's that is the most robust and abrasion resistant at this price. At the abrasion zones, Climb wins again. 840D 6.6 nylon versus a 750D PWR proprietary fabric on the Tornado. The climb is purely the more structurally sound of the two jackets. That's not to say the Tornado doesn't have its merits. As stated before, the CE level armor in the shoulders and elbows is superior to the induction D3O level one. The Tornado has a flexi snap adjustable collar and a snapback collar to help with airflow on those hot summer days. Revit markets this jacket as a three season spring, summer, autumn jacket because of the inclusion of the Hydrotex removable waterproof thermal liner. Depending on how you look at it, this could be a plus. But as of late, I'm just not a big fan of the whole modular waterproof design when it comes to liners that are to be worn under the jacket. They only work for a short while, and while you're trying to get to a shelter, your jacket is just soaking through, eventually getting saturated and weighing it down. Now you need to get somewhere to dry it off. The thermal liners never really seem to do a great job of keeping you warm either. For both solutions, you're better off buying gear specific to the purposes of keeping you dry and warm. Overgarment rain gear and a decent jacket that fits under your moto jacket? That's what I would go for. And Revit claims this liner is a destination piece? Maybe for some. As for adjustability, they both provide adjustable armor pockets at the elbows. They both have adjustable cinch straps at the elbow, but the Tornado has adjustable snap straps at the bicep and cinch straps at the waists. Additionally, the Tornado comes with a short connection zipper to connect with your riding pants. They both come with comparable storage, but with the Hydrotex liner in the Tornado, you are adding a few more spots. 
it really becomes a question of form versus function at the end of the day. The induction is no frills chainmail meant for bombing the trails on a hot summer day or even cruising the highway for long stretches. It's stitched into the riding position so it makes its purpose known. It's less comfortable in any other position. Jacket on, hit the trail, hit the roads, stop the bike, take the jacket off, drink some Gatorade, wash, rinse, repeat. The tornado skin is a little thinner, literally. The mesh doesn't feel as heavy duty, but the jacket's focus seems less heavy duty. There's a reason why the mesh on all these jackets is woven into the lower impact abrasion zones. If the focus was on adventure riding that only included fire roads and lakeside trails to the campground, I think the tornado would be the entry level jacket of choice. It's just the more comfortable of the two. Now let's compare the Baja S4 and the Cayenne Pro. Like I said earlier, these two companies are watching each other. The playing field is a little more level here. 549 for the S4 and 559 for the Cayenne. Both jackets utilize Scholar Dynatech mesh for their primary mesh components. Both jackets have tremendous amounts of storage. Both have secret pockets. Both are prepped for hydration packs. The Cayenne diverges from the Baja in a couple of areas. One, CE level two armor all around. Two, it includes the kidney belt. And three, it utilizes leather instead of super fabric in the high abrasion zones at the shoulders and elbows. The S4 utilizes Climb's collar tab back system for increased airflow. Overall, it's really a coin toss between these two jackets. As we will see later, the overall valuation on each of these jackets puts them pretty neck and neck. The Revit does have the upper hand with CE Level 2 armor, however. All four of these jackets are CE AA rated, being one level away from the most abrasion resistant jackets you can buy. You could always add better armor to the climb, but then that's going to cost you more money. And one last thing to consider if you're choosing between these jackets is form and fit. I really like the way the climb jacket fits. It's probably because I'm an American, but they say large and they fit me a large. With the Revit's, they are both extra large and still fit a bit strange. There must be a lot of long-armed, short torso Europeans out there. They're slimming. Yeah, that's what I'd call it. Or I like pizza. It's kind of like this. Climb, Enduro, Dual Sport, Hardcore, Revit, Discovery Route, not so hardcore. What would your choice be? So I put the jackets to battle on paper to help push my decision over the edge. Take a look at some of this data. If you're in the same boat as me, I hope this helps you. If push came to shove today, I'd probably pick the Cayenne Pro. It just represents the overarching best value amongst the four mesh offerings here. In hindsight, the climb induction is teetering on the edge of not even fitting into the adventure world at all. Its road bias really shows when stacking up the functionalities of the other jackets. Maybe that's why they make it in Goldwing flavors. But that brings up a point. How often do you ride off-road and what kind of off-roading are you going to do? It's all rider and application dependent. If you're a 90-10 guy and ride the dirt road to the farmhouse from the freeway, maybe the induction is right up your alley. Maybe the money is better spent on a nice steak dinner. What is glaringly obvious to me is that as you start to climb in price in both the Climb and Revit lineups with a specific focus on adventure gear, the value equation starts to diminish. For the price leap from the Baja S4 to the Adventure Rally Air, I'm quite satisfied with what the Baja S4 has to offer and would rather spend my hard-earned Gorilla dollars on other necessary gear, like pants. And the same cannot be said going backwards in the lineups. The $200 jump in price from the Tornado 3 to the Cayenne Pro is more than justified in my eyes, including a back protector, better abrasion resistance, more storage, a hydration pocket, a kidney belt, and an overall more robust design. It doesn't change the fact that these jackets are still expensive. Now we're back to that supply and demand thing again, and that's something we'll always have to contend with, if not more so now, with fewer younger people engaging in the sport. I'm still beside myself with the number of offerings on the table from such a large number of manufacturers, and I wonder how tough of a fight it is to maintain just a small piece of their share in the market. That's another story altogether. For now, price is something we're going to have to contend with. And for me, it's always gonna be what gives me the best bang for the buck. We'll see you next time.